Let's go to Ashley in Oklahoma City. Yeah, I would like help um, deciding on if I should send my six-year-old to public school or just homeschool her. Okay, tell me about it. What's going on? What are you thinking? Um, whenever I was pregnant, all of that, I, I was dead set on homeschooling. And then I realized that I'm not very social myself. <laughs> like, <laughs> then, so I'm kind of selling. <laughs> then you met your kid and you were like, nope. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I can do all of the academic stuff, all of that, but I'm, I'm not very good at letting her play with other kids or meeting moms to play with other kids. Um, How come? And I guess I, uh, I, guess I just don't do it myself. <laughs> oh, okay. You don't like other yeah. people? I mean, I do, but I have a younger daughter, and I don't like having to wrestle both of them. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I now I'm thinking about public school, and I feel like it would be a better option. I'm just still nervous about that. What are you nervous about? Um, she's very... I don't want her to... Her innocence to go away and her to be exposed to things that she wouldn't be if she were at home. Okay. Um, and just the pressure that school will bring. I want her to stay young as, as long as possible, I guess. Gotcha. So what do you think is going to happen in a public school? Like what type of exposure are you worried about or what type of pressure are you worried about? Cause you're talking about like kindergarten at this point, right? Yes. <laughs> So, um, in between learning how to count and read, what type of uh, what, what type of pressure are you thinking of? Uh, well, my mind it automatically goes to bad things, but like, I mean, tell me what I, the bad things are. Learn about sex and learn about body parts and learn swear words yes, and that, learn um, like watch somebody get punched. Like, what what are the things that you're worried about? No, more of my niece. She was exposed to pornography at seven okay. um, from school. That and. Her just worrying about what other people think, yeah. um, not having that confidence in herself or starting to be insecure, Okay, all of that, which I don't know if it happens at kindergarten or not, but <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it happens everywhere. Here, here's, here's my thought on it, okay? Um, we went through this same scenario here in my house. Um, I'm a big, big, big believer in public schools. Love them, love them, love them. And over the last five to 10 years, I hate with all of my guts, this paranoid obsession with technology in mm -hmm. schools. If we don't get them this Chromebook, this device, this thing, this iPad, then they're going to be so far behind and they're going to fall apart and the world's going to be. And schools across the country are spending billions of dollars on on like gadgets for kids. It's not learning, right? Um, and I know there's some tech ed folks or ed tech folks who want to go to fight me on it. That's fine. I'd love to, I'd love to meet up with you on it. That's a different phone call. Um, but I'm a big believer in public schools. The teachers, many of the teachers are, are extraordinary to be underselling them. They're magic what they do. And they get up every day thinking about our kids. There are crappy teachers out there. No question about that. Here's, here's my thought on it. Your kid over time is going to be exposed to, is going to hear bad words, is going to learn wild things about sex that are so like are anatomically impossible, but that's how they're going to figure it out, right? They're going to learn weird things about how people do Christmas differently and why does your mom look like that and why does your dad have that? Like, they're going to learn those things. Where I landed personally in our home is I want them to have those experiences and those questions in my house. I want to cultivate a spirit or an ethos of communication on our house. I want to um, like cultivate, hey, tell me about something you saw that you'd never seen before. Uh, I asked my son the other day, I was like, hey, what new words have you learned this year? And he told me the words he learned this year. And um, I was like, what do those even mean? I, I never had that conversation with my dad, but I wanted to teach him a few things. Number one, I'm not scared of any question you're going to bring me. None. Zero. Number two, those words coming out of your mouth, lightning doesn't strike you, you don't die. Number three, they actually have meanings. Number four, what's the context? Why would we say those? Why wouldn't we say that? Right? So I want them to, him to be a consumer of the world around him, and I want to be a safe resource for him. And so 
sometimes people take that logic to an extreme and they say, well, I'm going to want my kids to get wasted with all of their friends at my house because I want them to, you know what I mean? And there's a point where that gets stupid, right? The ROI on that gets dumb. Um, but that's why I am, that's why I have no problem with the public school system that I happen to be a part of. I do know there's some really rough public schools out there that aren't any good. So you as a, as a parent are going to have to be discerning about that. Um, I'll tell you on our end, we went and my wife especially went and met with the teacher, met with the counselor, met with everybody when we moved. What's this experience going to be like? And it was remarkable. And we've also been really loud about here's what we will accept with technology and what we won't accept with technology. And so some of that's just being a, an involved and engaged parent, not an idiotic parent, but an engaged parent. Um, how much of this, and let me ask you this because I've experienced this in my own house, how much of this do you have guilt that you wanted to be a homeschooler and it's not working out for you and your child? Um, I think that's most of it. I feel like I should be able to do that um, because I'm her mom. (laughs) Ah, there you go. I experienced that. My wife experienced that. Many of our friends experienced that, especially when COVID kicked off, that we were going to stay at home. We're going to homeschool. This is going to be great. And then two months in, it's like, I just had this image of showing up to my front porch and my wife's on the front porch just smoking a cigarette, holding a shovel. And I would just know like, well, one of my kids is in the yard, right? Um, It just wasn't going to end well. And then there's all of that compounding guilt, like, oh, I can't even be around my own kid. I can't, right? And all that stuff's unnecessary, but it just piles up on you. Um, Why why is that seed sitting there in your soul? Why is is that seed taking root in your heart there? Um... I'm not really sure. I That's kind of how I feel about a lot of things. I just always put it on myself. <laughs> hmm. Why do you do that to yourself? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so I want to... I just feel like I should be able to do all the things and do them well. Hmm. So do me a favor tonight, okay? Um, your husband a good guy? Yes. Okay, so I want you all to do a, 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 what do you, a an exercise together, okay? I want you to r- sit with him and to write down all of the things that you, quote unquote, should be able to do. I want you, it's just a should list. You should be able to change all the diapers with a smile on your face and joy in your heart because this is your precious baby. You should be able to wash all the skid marks out of a six-year-old's underwear because I just love that baby, right? Um, You should be able to never get annoyed with mommy, hey mom, hey mom, hey mom, right? I want you to write down all of those shoulds and then I want you and your husband to go through those and demand evidence from them. Like, is this true? And my guess is a whole bunch of those shoulds have been put there by your parents, your in-laws, your your interpretation of... um, what Instagram nonsense, like this curated existence that's not real, but that we, especially moms, beat each other up with, right? All You're going to find a lot of this is just garbage. Because my guess is, Ashley, you're a great, great mom. And you love your kid a lot. And you ran into a situation where there's going to be a professional that's going to be better at a particular role, and that's awesome. Great. Send your kid to public school. Cultivate a conversation that happens every day. Um let your teacher know of your kid, hey, my seven-year-old niece or nephew got introduced to pornography. That cannot happen with my child. And it's your responsibility as the teacher who gave them this tech to keep that from happening. And I'd rather you see a bulldog on be, be a bulldog on behalf of your kid than um, beat yourself up for not being all things to all people. Does that make sense? Yeah. I want you to be a mom that delights in the things that she does well and is bold and brave enough to pass along the things that she doesn't do well. And I don't want your child to ever feel that mom tension, that angst, that anxiety, because a kid is going to backfill that as though it's her fault and she's going to try to solve it. Or yes, she, I see that now sometimes. <laughs> tell me about that. Um, well, she's the oldest of the two, and she just want, she just like me, perfectionist, just wants to do everything. And she's always saying, I'm trying to do the right thing so I don't get in trouble. And again, she's... She's five right now, yeah. so. <laughs> so, is that how you are in in, in other aspects of your life? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
since I was a kid, I was the same way. Hmm. Who were you protecting at your house? My little sister. <laughs> Who were you trying to please? Um, I was trying to be noticed by my parents, my mom and dad. Okay. My dad wasn't really around, so I always thought I had to be something for him to be around. Gotcha. You're going to be extra sparkly and extra shiny, right? Yeah. Is that exhausting? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to stop the performance with your husband and stop the performance with your little baby, with your six-year-old, with your new child. And I want you to begin practicing just being you. And I want you to practice loving and connecting with that kid come hell or high water. And that starts with, you've heard me say this over and over, it starts with those little bitty knucklehead things like every day in the morning and every day in the evening, I'm going to hold my kid's face and I'm going to look him in the eyes and I'm going to say, I love you. And I'm so, so, so glad that I get to be your mom and dad. I get to be your mom. I got picked to be your mom. And they'll go, ma, ma. And when they bring you that paper and say, look, the teacher put a check mark on it. Isn't this so good? Your response is not, yeah, that's right. Or why didn't you get a check plus? The response is, did you work really hard? Are you proud of the work that you put into that? And they say, yeah, I'm proud. And say, I'm really proud that you're proud. Good for you. Because we want to praise their efficacy inside, not the achievement, right? And you sound like you're ready to rock and roll. Send your kid to public school. Be really clear with your husband about what y'all want at, at a public school, what you won't tolerate at a public school, and be direct with it. And then if you do it for a year and it's, it's no good, then you can get some more skills when it comes back to considering homeschooling again. Um, we've got close friends who've homeschooled, and they love it. They're incredible at it. And we've got friends who've tried it. We tried it. It didn't work. It didn't work for us. And our kids are absolutely thriving in the schools that they're at. So it's an individual thing for every family. Don't do it because you're scared of my kid's going to hear a thing or see a thing. I actually want that, especially when they're in my home. I don't want them the first time they hear something they've never heard before to be at a college when they live seven hours away from me. I don't want them the first time they see something that scares them to be eight hours away at a college or 17 hours away at a new job. I don't want that. I want them to have those experiences when they're with me. So we can create that conversation. I love your heart, Ashley. Good for you. You've got this. You've got this. Don't doubt yourself. Honor yourself and do the should exercise tonight with your husband. I, I, his eyes are going to bug out of his head when he sees the things all written out that you think you should be doing as a mom, as a wife, as just a neighbor. Um, and hopefully you can have some peace when you mark those things off and be like, I shouldn't do that. Nobody should like cleaning skid marks. It's disgusting. It's awful.